Hello, in this part we will focus on counting semaphores in practice. Let's do some practice. In our example we will use the following scenario. There are three tasks, task 1, task 2 and task 3. All of them have the same priority, for example OS priority normal. Additionally, there is one counting semaphore with its max count value set to 2. Task 1 and task 2 will release the semaphore while task 3 will wait for two tokens. At the beginning there are no free tokens in the semaphore, so task 3 is blocked. Context is switched to task 1, which is releasing one token of the semaphore, then task 2 during its time slot is releasing second token. It causes unblocking of task 3 till next iteration of its function, where it will wait again for two tokens of the counting semaphore. In case task 3 would have higher priority than task 1 and task 2, the situation would look a bit different. Just after the release of a first token, there would be a context switch from task 1 to task 3 as the first token has been unblocked and then task 3 will be moved again into blocked state waiting for the next token. After this, either task 1 would continue its job or there would be a context switch to task 2. Please notice that there is no single function to which is waiting for more than one semaphores. We should execute twice the wait function, one by one, waiting for one token of the semaphore each. Now we will try to check it in practice. We can reuse previous exercise to save some time. With an STM32CubeMX or STM32CubeIDE, please select the FreeRT OS in version CMC's OS version 2. Within its config parameters, please enable Use Config Semaphores. Then, within Tasks and Queues tab, please create three tasks. Task 1 with Start Task 1 Entry function, Task 2 with Start Task 2 Entry function, and Task 3 with Start Task 3 function. All of those tasks should have the same priority, for example OS priority normal, and the same stack size, like 256. We will need an external interrupt in our example. So, we need to configure PC13 as GPIO XT13 within pinout configuration, assuming that uh, our blue button on Nucleo board is connected to PC13 pin. We can specify the label on this pin, but it is not necessary. Then, within NVIC configuration, we need to enable XT line 15 to 10 interrupts and select it within column uses free RTOS functions. In this case, we would be able to release semaphore from external interrupt callback. In the next step, we'll create a counting semaphore. Within FreeRTS configuration, please select Timers and Semaphores tab and click on Add button in Counting Semaphore section. Set semaphore name to, for example, My Counting Sem01 and set its count to 2. Then click on OK button. After this, a new counting semaphore should be visible within Counting Semaphore list. Now we can generate the code and open main.c file. Within main.c file we can notice how counting semaphore is created within create the semaphore section just after hardware initialization in main function. We need to place some code within all tasks entry functions bodies. Within start task 1 function, in its infinite loop, please release our counting semaphore using OS semaphore release function then send one over SWO using task action function and at the end move the task to blocked state for two seconds using OS delay function. Then similar operations we should do in start task 2 function with the only difference that this time we will send two over SWO using task underscore action function. Please notice that there is no timeout within semaphore release functions. So, in case of semaphore is already released or contains maximum number of tokens, function will not wait but just will return an error code. This is why in more complex examples it is important to check the return values of those functions. In our simple example there is no risk that semaphore will be full, this is why we have used simplified version. In task 3 function body we need to put two OS semaphore acquire functions one by one. There is no single function waiting for few instances of the same semaphore. In case you would like to synchronize a task with more than one component, other task or interrupt, it is better to use other techniques like thread flags or event flags. Please have a look at dedicated parts of this session for more details. Coming back to our example. After code modifications of task start task free function, we can compile the code, start the debug session, 
open SWV ITM console and start the application. The result should be the following. Task 3 synchronized, then Task 1 release counting semaphore, then Task 2 release the counting semaphore, again Task 3 synchronized because there are two tokens within our counting semaphore available, and just after it Task 3 is again in wait state waiting for two instances of our counting semaphore, so we need to wait till Task 1 will release again the counting semaphore and Task 2 will release again the counting semaphore. And it is continuing in the loop like this. Now we can extend our example by releasing the semaphore from the external interrupt callback. For this we need a one external interrupt connected to PC13 pin on a Nucleo board, where our blue button is connected. With an external interrupt callback, HAL GPIO XT callback, which is defined as weak within HAL GPIO module, we need to send an exclamation mark over SWO interface using task underscore action function and release our semaphore. After this, please again compile the code, start the debug session, open SWV ITM console and start an application. The final result should be similar to this one on the slide. Let's focus on selected area. What is happening there? Task 1 and Task 2 have released semaphores, then Task 3 took it two times like requested. In the meantime, there were two occurrences of external interrupt, two times fast press of a blue button, what gave a two times semaphore which is unblocking Task 3 again. Thank you for watching this video.